Well, it's going to get hot tonight. The moon is shining bright. Hello, uh, this is Tom Rush. He, he will be playing at the hall December 2nd, Friday. And yes. I'm Fred Ames. I'm with the Oaks Ames Hall. And uh, Tom, we're, we're very much looking forward to you, you coming back to the hall. This will be your, your third time. I can't wait. Yeah, and, and Andrea, I, I think she said the last time was about seven years ago. And I, and I know you actually, you came, I think, in the early 2000s, 20,000s, whatever they call it, you know. Yeah. And it was our first time doing it, and you were one of our first uh, acts. And I remember afterwards, you kind of took me aside. <laughs> and your concern was, how is anybody going to get down that fire escape with all those tables there? Right. And you, you pointed out a few other things. So I've you were you were very instrumental, if you will, in our learning curve uh, to put on these performances. So I just want to tell you everything you've recommended has been done. Good. So, so this is going to be a fundraiser. We've been closed for nine months, mm -hmm. which uh, we had some truss repairs that had to be done. And if they hadn't, the roof was going to fall in. So that has just been finished. So. You was decided that you should be the opening act to commemorate. I'm, I'm honored. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we're very glad. We're very glad. You know, you've sold out every time, and uh, I, I, you know, we're 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 certain that you that will happen. Me to sell out? Is that what you're saying? Where, well, you know, there's going? there's I you know I've I've thought about that. Should I ask you? But uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know who you sold out to. Tom Rush, I guess, right? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I, I just want to let you know some people uh, know about you know your your career and and you've you started back in the early '60s. You you knew at that point uh, Joni Mitchell, uh, Jackson Brown, and I think you didn't you write a couple of songs for Joni Mitchell? Do I have that? No, oh. uh, she wrote a couple that I was the first to record. Oh yeah, yeah, Circle way back it, when. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, actually I'm calling this. 2022, my 60th year on stage because my first album came out in 62. That's incredible. Yeah. And I clearly had been playing for one or two days before my first album came out. Right, but, right, right. But right. that's when I start the clock. So you're professional. This is my 60th year on stage. Well, that's 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 incredible. And um, also, I you know, people want to do a little googling uh, of. of Tom's song. There's a, a song that I always liked, and I think the last time I, you did it, I, I came up and spoke to you about it. It was really, you could hear a pin drop, you know, in the room when you, when you did it. And that was No Regrets. And I'm, I'm, sure every, I'm sure everybody says it. it's an incredibly poignant song. And uh, oh, I, hope, you. I hope you'll be, you'll be playing it on Friday. I will, I will make a plan to do that. Oh, good, good. Yeah, no, and, and also the other thing uh, uh, about your concerts is you have such a nice patter in between. You're a great raconteur. <laughs> and it, it's really nice. It gives a very good feeling to the concert, you know. And uh, uh, One of the things I learned early on was that if people like you, they're much more apt to like the song you're about to play. Yes. So yes. I would, you know, and it, for me, the songs are stories. Yeah. So I would, you know, I'd start telling a story about the song. This is a song I'm about to do, and here's where it came from, and blah, blah. Or just totally unrelated stories and it strikes me as odd but i get requests now for the stories oh i've got one <laughs> you and jackson brown under the table and hadn't seen each other in months and he asked you about a certain uh, individual oh, that one yeah god that was and it's really typical that's how it goes right so yeah i i okay i'm sure you've got many more but uh i can say they're very good stories um i'm going to tell folks come come see me at tomrush.com yeah and there's actually, if you click on shows, there'll be a drop down menu with all the upcoming shows, including the no one we're talking about. Yeah. And there'll be a link straight to the ticket page. Great. Yep. No. And we've got we were all set up on, on, on our page to just, you know, go right right in, buy your tickets. It's very, very easy to do. I, I, hope, I, hope, I want to say a word, though, about the Spire Center too. this place. Yeah, I'm very impressed with it and, uh, you know, recommend that people come and check it out. I mean, I, I really like it. It's, and a great, it's a great room. It's, it's a it's a little bigger than the hall. We're about two hundred and something. They're like two fifty, including the balcony. Including the balcony. But I've looked around and they've had some. I would like to, you know, have Peter Wolf come to the hall sometimes. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, um, what was the uh, about your music? I mean, what was the first song you played or the first song you learned and, and why? <laughs> oh, and what and what type was it? Was That's it a pure good. folk? Was That's it? That's going to go way back. Yeah. Um, when I was a little kid, 
There's an opera singer, a black opera singer named Paul Robeson. Oh yeah, baritone. Uh, yes. And I just love Paul Robeson. He did. He did and, Old Man River, right? Yeah. Yeah. And among others. And sure. I, I, for a little while, I wanted to be Paul Robeson, but my voice hadn't changed yet. So I don't think I was, you've gotten there yet. I was right. still an yeah. alto. <laughs> I, okay. I couldn't do baritone. And then Josh White, I encountered Josh White. Uh, I'd learned to play the guitar a little bit at this point, but I was playing mainly uh, trying to learn the rock and roll songs because this mm -hmm. was the late 50s when okay. Elvis and Fats Domino and the Everly Brothers, Everly Brothers yeah. and were, all those folks were huge. And so I was working on those songs and on a trip across the country with my parents I remember I was 16. I, I remember because they let me drive for the first 2,000 miles. And I finally realized I was being had. <laughs> was but, the, the thrill wore off, right? It was like, yeah. But we stopped uh, in Wyoming, and uh, the people that we were staying with had some Josh White recordings. And I was just knocked off my sock. Knock, it just knocked my socks off. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because I'd never heard songs like that. I'd never heard a guitar played like that. Okay. So I, you know, then I wanted to be Josh White, which also didn't work out all that well. But. Well, you know, I, I, I read uh, uh, an interview, you know, uh, uh, of you, and it's, I mean, your, your style really was a mixture of those different genres, right? You, you took a little from each, and that really I, gave you a, a, your own distinct style. Yeah. That's a, I'm a, <laughs> what's that? I'm a very versatile thief. <laughs> well, that, isn't that what music is? Everybody steals well, from everybody. Right? It was actually, it was, I, I, I really got into it uh, when I was uh, a student at Harvard, and there was a folk scene going on that was just amazing. Yes. Uh, and one place in particular called the Club 47 mm -hmm. that uh, brought in the legends, and they, they would also host the young kids, myself included, but oh, really? you okay. could go and you could hear the Carter family. Oh, you're kidding. No, yeah. Flat, yeah. Flat and Scruggs and Bill Monroe and on and on, and a lot of the old blues guys. Most of my contemporaries in town were kind of musical specialists. Mm -hmm. There were people that did nothing but Woody Guthrie songs, and people that did nothing but Delta Blues. And I was the ge the generalist. Yes. Because I would pick, you know, I like that song over here, but I like this one over there, and I would- Put them together. Put them, yeah. you know, put them together in a show, and it helped keep me awake. And I think the audience <laughs> keep engaged because the, the next song is not going to be like the one you just heard. Yeah, 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 so it's like doing the weather. If you don't like it, just wait. It's going to yeah. change, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that is a good scene, and I, I think Club Forty Seven is is still open, and, and it's not. No, what's the one with the long tables? And you know, everybody sits at, at long tables. Well, I think the club you're thinking about is called Passim. Yes, that's what it is. Club yeah. Passim, but they are actually genetically unrelated. Okay. Club Forty Seven closed, and the room was dark for a couple of years. It was a Dukakis campaign headquarters. Okay. For a couple of minutes, and then <laughs> Bob right. and Ray Ann Donlan. Yeah. came in and opened the Club Passim, and they would actually get very annoyed if people coming down the steps would say, is this the Club 47? And they'd say, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, that it's was, Passim. Was yeah. And I'm, I'm sticky about that because I now own the name Club 47. Oh, really? And I do concerts under that name. Are you kidding? Well, I, I, put, I put together a couple of well-known artists, yeah. or established artists, and a couple of newcomers. Mm -hmm that are musically compatible, and then I coerce them into playing with one another. I think, not, I bet, I think you're good at that, yeah. Not yeah. just doing their own, you know, their own set. Sure. Uh, and it's, they're, they're a lot of fun. Easy to remember, Matt, okay. Matt Nakoa, check him out, Matt, N-A-K-O-A yeah. dot, dot com. Yeah. And he's a monster talent, and he's been, I've been blessed, but having him uh, as my backup guy for about eight years now, Oh, all right. But he's also he's got his own career going, uh, and it's I, I'm not going to have him forever because he's going to be a superstar, and I'm hoping when he's playing stadiums he lets me open the shows. Well, I, I loved your comment about uh, here I am, you know, uh, paying this guy to upstage me. You know? <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with me? <laughs> no, he'll do. He'll be doing a couple of songs on his own during the course of the evening. Okay, and, and the audience is just loving the bits. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And also, we've got we've got a nice 1937 Steinway. We keep it tuned, and we'll tune very, it the day of. Very cool. And I think he's going to like it. It's it's a nice it's a nice. Uh, we're very proud of it. So you know, he's got a, a good sound to it. He will love it. Yeah.
Yeah. Well, I think I think that's it. That's about it. And um, again, we are very pleased and honored to have you back. Well, it's an honor to be opening yeah. the hall again after oh. some downtime. Yes, and and you know, fundraiser because in in a, about two years we're going to try to raise a substantial amount of money uh, to do a complete interior and updating of the hall. You put in an elevator, central air conditioning. You know, sort of do the first real modernization since 1881. That's yeah, it's time. Yeah, <laughs> it's time. So quite a project. Yeah, so this is good. This is really sort of a kickoff to that whole process. So, you know. Well, I'm honored to be involved in this. Well, thank you. It's good to and look forward to seeing you soon. Okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. Okay. Signing off. Hey, hey, Tom Rush here. I'm coming to Northeastern Mass. And it's going to be at Oaks Ames Memorial Hall, a wonderful hall. I'm very much looking forward to it. And I have Matt Nicoa with me. Matt is a monstrously talented young fella. He'll be backing me up, but he'll be doing a couple of songs, two or three songs on his own during the course of the evening. He steals the show, and I pay him to do it. I don't know what's wrong with me. Anyway, come on by. 